Hi everyone, welcome to the new lecture of Java on Azure series. In the previous lectures, we developed Spring Boot services and we made it work with Azure MySQL database and Azure Postgres database. And we successfully established the database connectivity between the Spring Boot apps and the two database servers running on Azure Cloud. But if you notice one thing, let me go back to the code. This is the first service that we developed backed by Azure MySQL database. And similarly, this is the second service backed by Azure Postgres database. And if you notice in these two applications, we have these environment variables for data source, URL, username and password. This connection binding was created by Azure Toolkit, which basically converted these values to environment variables. So in this application, which is using Azure Postgres database, we have this connection binding and three environment variables. And similarly, the first service, which is using Azure MySQL database, we again have a similar connection binding with three different environment variables and these environment variables represent the password, the URL of the database and username. Now the point is this is still better than hard coding these values in the source code. With the help of environment variables, we have externalized these configurations, which is more manageable and source code basically does not have any configuration hard coded. But the thing is these values are not secure. Anyone who has access to these environment variables has access to your data source URL and credentials like username and password. So what we are going to do in this video, we are going to make it secure. So let's go back to the slide quickly. We are talking about the agenda of this video. What we will do, we will use a new Azure service, a new Azure resource, which is Azure Key Vault. And as the name suggests, the Key Vault is used to store the sensitive data. It can be user credentials or database passwords or anything which is sensitive for the application. Now Azure Key Vault is a managed service, fully managed by Azure. So we don't need to manage anything. We just need to maintain the data. We just need to add the secrets that we want to manage and we get the security out of the box. So when we add a new secret or a new key to this Key Vault, that value is encrypted, that value is secured. Nobody can access that data, which is basically access based. So if we have provided the access of that resource to someone else, then only they can access and read that data. Otherwise it's secured. Another benefit with the Azure Key Vault is we get the functionality of invalidating the resources. So at any point of time, if you got to know that a certain value or certain secret has been compromised, we can invalidate that resource, which will basically make that resource useless to anybody who had access to that resource, whether it is application or a human. With the help of Key Vault, we can also rotate the keys very easily. So let's say we had two keys, key one and key two. And after some time, we can simply update or refresh the keys. We can change the keys very easily. So here we have this Key Vault and the application is reading the secrets from the Key Vault and then using those secrets or connection parameters to connect to the databases. So what are the steps? As I said, we will set up an Azure Key Vault. Then we will create secrets for Azure MySQL and Postgres database. And in the end, we will enhance the existing services to read the secrets from the key vault. And then those values will be used to connect to those databases. So let's get started here on the Azure portal. Same as other resources, we can create a resource by clicking this button. And here to find a resource, we can simply search it. So in order to create a key vault, we can search key vault. This is the one. And here on this page, we see lots of results for key vault. So it's not only showing the Azure offerings, but some offerings from third party vendors as well. Depending on the use case, we may choose a third party solution. But in this case, we need to select this one, which is coming from Microsoft. So let's create a new key vault, fill up the form and provide the required details. First of all, the resource group, we know we have an existing resource. So I'm going to use that one resource group Java on Azure, then provide the key vault name. code alchemist vault all right and nothing else hit next as for the access i'm not going to change anything as of now i'm going with the default i'm going to enable the public access so again not going to change anything here hit next hit review and create and now hit create to create the key vault this will take some time i'll come back when this resource is fully created so the deployment is complete that means we have a new azure key vault let's go to the resource and same as any other resource, we can find all the relevant information here like vault URI, which will be used to access this vault. To add a new secrets, we go to the secrets 
and as you can see this is saying the operation is not allowed by RBAC which is role based access control so we need to provide some access in order to add new secrets so we'll go to the access control and here add role assignment and for now I think we can use this access which is key vault administrator and selecting this hit next go to select members and I need to select my user which is the code alchemist select review and assign and that's it so now we are assigning a new role to this user so that this user can access the key vault and create some secrets now that this assignment is complete let's go back so we can see after refreshing the page it is working fine it has picked the permission so we can add a new secret to do that we'll go to generate and import and here we can add a new secret by providing the name the secret value and notice we have more control we can even set the activation date the expiration date of that secret so let's see what are the secrets that we need if we go back to the service one which is the book service which is using azure mysql database we need three secrets one for the data source url then the username and then the password so let's do that uh, open in editor to get basically the url we'll copy this one go to the name and here we can say mysql url enter the value and hit create create another one again for the user mysql user let me check the name which is book admin like this hit create another one for the password mysql user password and the password that we have selected okay hit create so we have three secrets for the mysql which is the url the username and password similarly we need three secrets for the postgres so we'll go to the second service car service go to the connection bindings open in editor the first one is this url for the postgres database go to the key vault create a new secret postgres url enter the value the second secret is for the username let's verify the name which is car admin and finally the third secret for the password it creates so we have added all the required information as secrets in this key vault that includes the data source url the username and password of both the databases the next step is to enhance the existing services to add the dependency of key vault in order to read these values in the application so that the applications can still connect to the same databases all right so let's do that here we are in the first microservice so we'll go to the pom.xml because now we need to add the key vault support and right now it has some dependencies like boot starter web the azure starter jdbc mysql starter data jdbc and in the same way we need to add a new dependency for azure key vault so we can add a new dependency here and we'll search com.azure.spring and here scroll down and find the key vault dependency that we need so this is the one this is coming from com.azure.spring and the name of the dependency is spring-cloud-azure-starter-keyvault so we'll select this one select the pom.xml reload the project so it has downloaded that dependency and we have successfully added the dependency how do we read the values from the secure vault to do that we'll go to the application.properties file and here we need to provide the information of the secure vault otherwise how would the application know where to find the secure vault so we'll go to this link this article is on the azure key vault how to work with azure key vault and from this article we need to copy this property and let's paste it and change the value so this property is basically to provide the connection url of key vault and this is where we provide the url of key vault that we created so let's go back to the key vault and go to the overview and here you will find the vault uri so let me copy this one 
and we'll simply replace the value like this now this property is responsible for locating the key vault and when we start the application spring boot will see that we have added a new dependency and we have this property in the application.properties file so it will establish a connection with this key vault the next step is how do we read the secrets from the key vault so we can remove this connection binding and application can read the data from the secure vault well it's pretty simple it follows the same model of reading the properties so instead of reading the property from the environment variable we simply need to pass the name of secret as the property and spring application will be able to read that secret from that key vault automatically so let me show you what we mean if we go back to the secrets and here we have three secrets related to the mysql so for the url we can simply copy this name and in the application.properties instead of passing the same value as environment variables we can remove this one and we simply need to pass the name of secret which is mysql url and similarly for the username and password we will pass the name of corresponding secrets here as property names so let me copy them as well mysql user and mysql user password so this is mysql user and mysql user password that's it and we need to do the same thing in second service as well so let me copy the url we'll go to the car service in the application.properties we'll paste the url and second step is to change these values to use the corresponding secrets for postgres so let's go back to the secret page and here we have postgres sql postgres user and postgres password postgres user and postgres password and the second thing is we need to add the dependency so let me copy that one as well from first service which is key vault and we'll go to the second service form.xml and i'll add the dependency here reload the project so we have not changed anything else in the logic we simply added a new dependency of key vault then in application.properties we provided the path or the uri of that key vault and replaced all the environment variables with the name of those secrets and that's it so now if we start the applications first they should be up and running and second we should be able to insert the data in the corresponding database and read the data from that database so let's start the services this is the car service and we'll go to the book service and start this as well so the book service is up and running let's check the car service and this service is also up and running in case your service doesn't come up or you face any credential not found exception or fail to configure the key vault property source make sure that you are correctly logged in i think there is a bug with the latest version of intellij where even if you are logged in via azure toolkit it's not able to pass on the credentials so let me show you my version that i am using which is 2023.2.4 so in case you face this issue make sure you are correctly logged in and to do that you can use azure cli I will share the link of Azure CLI so you simply need to install the Azure CLI uh, you can find the instructions here and once you have the Azure CLI up and running simply go to the terminal and run this az login command it will prompt a login window you just need to log in and after that it will work fine in my case I did that and after that my services are up and running now to test this book microservice if you go to the book controller here we can see we have exposed two endpoints one is HTTP post and the second one is HTTP get that means if we make an http get request to this endpoint and if we see the books from the database that means the configuration is working fine to do that we'll use postman so let me copy the port and we'll go to the postman replace the port and this is going to be a get request and that's it if we send the request now we see the books from the book database and notice this book database is mysql database specifically azure mysql running on azure cloud so that means the connection parameter that this application is now reading from azure key vault is working fine let's test the second service as well if we go to the car service car controller here we have a single endpoint which is the post mapping that means we can add a new car so i'll copy the port and go to the postman replace the port and in the body we now need to provide a body to 
add a new car because this is going to be an HTTP post request. So let me verify the required fields. If we go to the car model, we need to pass brand, model, and year. Year is integer. So first of all, brand, model, and year. We can say new car. The model is going to be new car model and year 2023. Let's send the request and we see the response car 2 created successfully. And we can verify this by connecting to the Postgres SQL which is running on Azure Cloud because we don't have the HTTP get endpoint for this service. So let's go to the Azure portal and here we will open the Postgres SQL car server which is the one that we need and here if you go to the databases this is the database car db that we need to connect to click on the connect button and it will connect to this database so we are connected to car db and let's figure the select query and this is the one that we just added new car new car model 2023 So we successfully inserted the data into this Postgres database CarDB. So what we did, we successfully added the support of Azure Key Vault to the applications that we developed. And now the services that we developed are reading the configurations from this Key Vault. And the good thing is these values are now encrypted and secured. Nobody can access these values. Only people who have access to the Key Vault can access these values. So let's mark an end to this chapter. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.